Okay, now we're in the inside of the walkthrough. Um, follow me in here. When when you uh, don't have the plugged in or the generator on, um, you need to flip on the main power. When you're plugged in a generator on, this comes on automatically. But right now we're not plugged in or the generator's not on, so in order to use the power from the batteries, um, I'm gonna flip that on and it turns red. Um, here is the awning, that doesn't work. You're not allowed to use the awning. Um, this is just a porch light here. And then this is the outside um, porch light there. And then right here is the stabilizing jacks um, that come down behind the bumper to stabilize this when you got the slide outs out. Um, it follows the pattern of if you're the driver. So if I'm the driver, the right one on this side would be that. So you retract and extend. So you can hear it come down. Go feel that coming down. Ideally, you get the slide out out and then lower those things so it's not it's not unstable in here um, I'll leave that one down so when I turn on the car you can hear the humming that's under the sink um, that's letting you know that those are down again it's not really loud easily could be missed but I'll let you know, show you what that looks like okay here's here's a control panel here um, this is where you're going to start the generator start and stop um, just push that on and um, Right here will tell you how many hours and i record the hours um, on that here's the level so lpg is stands for is that's for propane so we're at two-thirds there but um you just bring it back to the same level it was at um batteries full the batteries are under the steps there um this is the fresh that's on e i i recommend um just putting maybe a third of a third full when you're traveling if possible um, if, you, if you're going to be using a lot from the fresh water tank, um, I recommend getting to where you're going before you fill that thing up. That's just a lot of weight, like 500 pounds um, that you'd have on board. If, uh, if possible, just wait to get to where you're going. But like I said, you'd want, you want some water in there so you can use the, the toilet or sink while you're traveling. And usually a third is just, is just fine for that. Um, black is on, um, there's black and there's the gray. Um, they need to come back on E, both of those. Don't worry about the tank heaters. This is for the black and the gray tanks. That's for in cold weather. Okay, the water pump. If you're using water from the, the fresh water tank, it's basically under, under us here. Um, in order to get that water out of the tank to the sinks or the shower, you need to turn on the pump. If you're in the city water, if you're using water from the city connection, you don't need to do that. The pressure from the city is just fine. You don't need the pump on it. Um, this is the slide out, do extend and retract. Um, I, w I recommend having the generator on or being plugged in to, to use the, the, the slide out. Um, it will work off a battery, but it feels like it's, it's quite hard on the battery. Um, but I, I, I do it on occasion, so it's not that big of a deal. But whenever possible, use the generator to, to use the slide out. Um, the battery is basically the slide outs, the slide out and the lights, um, maybe the circuit board for the fridge, but other than that, you have to have the generator on. So these outlets right, right here, um, the outlets throughout this place, these are only gonna work if you are plugged in or the generator's on. They're 120, the battery's 12 volts. It's basically some fans and the lights and the slide out. So we'll go ahead and retract the slide out here. Don't let kids use it. Um, just be super careful with them. Those motors are expensive. Use extreme care. Um, a, a quick thing to know about the slide out, they will not, it will not extend or retract if the vehicle is on or started or whatever. If it's on or started, you won't, it's a safety feature, so you can't push these things out while you're going down the road. So um, if it's not working, that would be your first clue to make sure the vehicle isn't on. So we'll go ahead and extend this. And I'm up two minds of uh, fully committing whether you, you can stop or not. Um, when I first got these units with these slide outs, um, I was told fully commit when you push these slides out. Um, although I've talked to people since then, 
and they're like, oh, it's totally fine to, to uh, stop, even if you didn't have to stop. Of course you'd want to stop if there was something in the way. But early on, I was only stopping when I absolutely had to because I was wor worried that the motors would come unsync. But after talking to people that know a lot about these things, um, they're on tra a track system, they can't come unsync. So um, since I learned that, I often stop because this takes so long to go all the way out when I only needed to go out just a little bit to access the bathroom. Um, when it's fully closed, when you're driving down the road, it, you really can't get to the bathroom unless you're quite small or like a child or whatever. Um, it's very hard to get to. And so um, uh, let's just start back here. Here's the bedroom. This is just a curtain here. You can close off for some privacy. Here's a thermostat, just like a house. Your temperature here, cold fan off and heat. Um, this is just for a fan. I would probably just keep that on auto. Um, so it's not on all the time. It only comes on when it needs to be. Um, this flip, when you got the slide out, you can flip this bed down. I got a mattress protector for this. It's oversized, so there's room to flip it, flip it shut. Um, there are sheets up here, and they are labeled. There's a mattress protector and fitted sheets for all the, all the beds, and they should be written on there what is what. Is, what, is what. Um, always use a mattress protector, um, even if you bring your own sheets. Um, if you use our sheets or your mattress protectors or towels or whatever, anything that you use, when you bring it back, you just leave it on the bed. That way I know that needs to be washed. If it's not on the bed, I just understand that it's, it wasn't used, so it doesn't need to be washed. In here is some, some towels. Uh, uh, a comforter for this bed here and um, a broom and, and whatnot in here. About this bed above the cab, that's kind of like a queen basically. Obviously it's not like a technical real bed so a fitted sheet would have a hard time working on that but what we've done with those is just cut the fitted part off so it just lays flat with both the mattress protector and the fitted sheet. Um, this it makes a full bed. This table just drops down and how that does is it just comes down and it sits on this little lip here and then the cushions come together and make a bed. And you just can flip this lever down here like this and then just can push it, push it down until it rests on that, those ledges there. And then I'll flip it close like that. Four seat belts, there's two on each side. Sometimes they fall behind here and you just gotta be careful when you pull these apart, there's Velcro. Um, but you can retrieve those seat belts from under there. Um, these should be empty in here. Yeah, there's some a fly swatter and some duct tape. Let's go in the bathroom. Oh, actually, yeah, this, there's this little drawer here. So in this little drawer, pull out drawer here. There's a vacuum. This is, um, you can use to clean this with. Um, this privacy curtain here. This is just to where you can block off the cab here, just Velcros to these tabs that go all along around this um, cab there so you can get some privacy. The user manuals for the coach are in this black bag here. Um, when I talk about the coach, that's the house part of the RV. That's the, all the livable space. Um, the, the chassis would be the Mercedes, the Mercedes portion. Um, that user manual would be in the glove box, but that's the user manuals. You'll find all the user manuals in that bag there. Um, Started. Let's go back to the bathroom. Okay. Here's a vent in here. This one doesn't have a cover. I'll show you the other vents. There's two that have a cover. The cover is nice, so um, if you left it open, if it rained, it's not going to get wet. Um, the ones without covers, if you left it open and you go hiking for the day and come back, you could have water in here from, from a rainstorm. Um, and also, if you drive with them open, you risk breaking them. Here's the shower. Be careful with this, this, this door, shower door. It's on a fast moving roller track system there. And if you don't have a good hold of it, it'll slam, it'll slam on you. Here's the water heater. Um, you can turn it on here. And um, here we go. You can just set the temperature here. I've had some issues with this water heater. And I think sometimes it's, is you, you, you're making it work too hard. Um, you know, you set your temperature here and then it's too hot and so you're 
constantly changing the hot and cold hair and it's trying to keep up. So maybe a good idea for it to work a little better on you is um, um, let's get back. just set the temperature and then to what feels good and then don't really mess with the cold. I, I, I think that kind of solves some of the problems, but it's a tankless water heater. It just takes a, a, a you know, maybe 30 seconds to warm up. And then if you've switched it cold and try to get it hotter, you give it a little bit, a couple more seconds, and it heats back up to where it needs to be. Okay. In here is uh, just some storage cabinets. You have to uh, use the toilet paper, RV toilet paper, RV or boats. Um, if you use regular toilet paper, you can cause a big problem. It won't, it might not dissolve and, and, and clog the tank in there. And then the tablets, you have to use these too. So before you use a toilet, drop one of these in. And uh, after every time you empty the tanks, use one of these tablets. I supply these and I, I, try, I try my best to supply toilet paper as well. But you always want to keep your eye on that. Um, and you just drop, you just drop the tablet in there. You can fill it half, half, you can start filling the toilet just by pushing on a little bit. Um, I don't have the pump on right now, but um, you can fill the toilet and then dissolve in the toilet and then flush it, or you can just drop it straight in. I don't think it matters. Okay. Back to these vents before I forget. This one has a cover and there's also the, the, the fan here, but, um, yeah, this one has a cover, and then the one above the sleeping area, they have them over the bed so the beds don't get wet. These, um, I should get them for all of them, but this one here in the middle is like the bathroom one; it does not have a cover, and so you can you can break those if you drive them open. Um, fuse box in here. That's where your breakers are and your fuses. GFI. If you if you trip the GFI, the reset the GFI is um, right here under the sink. That, that would have you reset the GFI. The, the, the outlet, probably the other would be the ones by the sink here would be on that same GFI. Right. Here's some pots and pans there. A convection microwave oven. It's nice, this unit has a convection oven. My other unit has a gas stove and it doesn't work that great. So these convection ovens work a lot better. I've never used it, but I've heard it was working. It works great for people. These, um, this cooktop here, this is the propane, and you can just turn it on and just can spark it. The lights there. The fridge. So, when you turn it, you push here and you can see the A, that stands for auto, it's on auto. So it automatically switches from power to gas. If we're, if we're plugged in or the generator on is on like it is now, it's, 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 it's running off of that. The, as soon as you're, you don't have the generator on or you're not plugged in, it'll automatically switch to gas. You can manually make it go to other things if you want. There's the battery. It's not going to go off a battery, um, but it'll go off gas or electric. I just like the auto, automatic. And there's just some storage. Um, there's the power strip. It's going to move over here. Okay, so here is a Blu-ray player for that TV that I showed you that was outside. Um, and then here's the here's the blu-ray player for this tv here now i get asked this a lot how if those outlets don't work unless the generator on or you're plugged in how can we just use that while we're driving without having to have the generator on well to do that is we have to use these inverters this would just plug into the cigarette lighter under there and then you can just plug into that and but you'll have to use this extension cord and this power strip to bring it bring the power over here so you can unplug the plug in the, the DVD player and also plug in the TV to that power strip and that extension cord is going to that inverter so you can at least have this TV working and this can pull out and, and swivel like that so people can watch TV without having to have the generator on obviously you wouldn't want to run that for very, this invert these inverters for very long without the car started without moving because you could um, run yourself out of battery that way okay here's the ladder it just clips in here like that um, as far as these blinds here they're on the rollers and so, some of them go better than others some of them you have to kind of finesse them up a little bit okay 
Be careful where you step. I know it's hard to tell people to be cautious where you step, but I've had some issues with these little lips here. You step on, the, people step on the edge and it, it peels, peels it back and pulls the laminate flooring out from under it. So just kind of be mindful of that if you can. Um, there's a little moon roof there. There's a retractable, uh, to extend and retract the, the, the blind for it. Okay, now to the cab part of it. Okay, I'm going to turn on the car and you can hear, You hopefully you'll be able to hear that hum from that stabilizing jack that I left down. Well, we're getting over, see it's even, the seat belt thing is even overpowering, but it's coming from under the sink. Not real loud, obviously easy to miss. Um, I wish it was a lot louder, but that's letting us know that the stabilizing jack is down. Good practice, I've said this before, good practice, just walk around the unit before you drive away. Okay, I, I, I record the miles. Um, here's where I'm gonna show you how to find the def, and I, I always don't really know how to find it either. I just kind of scroll through these things until I find it. I need to remember where it is so I can find it right off the bat. Sometimes it takes me a little minute to find it. I'm just pushing buttons here. Um, there it is. Okay, so we are more than half we're almost full so that would get us a long ways but i just leave it on this this gauge here so i know where i'm at all times i mean i'm not too concerned with anything else on those readouts other than this def this is showing me where my def fluid is okay the park brake here everybody's familiar with park brakes here's the here's the park reverse and drive everybody's familiar with that here's the touch screen like i said when you're in reverse it automatically comes on but in order to drive with it with the backup camera on all the time. We're on the radio now, but you can push that to go home and there's re re rear camera. And so now it's just on all the time. Um, every time you get in and start, you have to do that. Um, but back to the radio, let me show you how to do that again. With the radio, I just went to home. There's a rear camera. You, there's also a Bluetooth phone. You can pair your phone to this so um, you can access your phone through this. Um, and I, I believe the, the the Bluetooth code is four zero 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 zero. Oh, if it, this ever f freezes up on you, you can reset it right there by like a paper clip. You can push it in and reset. It. It's happened once where it froze, and you, you you need this not only for you know your sanity for music and whatnot while you're traveling, but to access that camera so you can see. Okay, I'm going to bring up this stabilizing jack. Oh, the chairs, yeah, I'm gonna need one to show you the chairs. So, you can switch these chairs around. Both of these chairs do that. You just pull on this little lever. Oh, actually, you gotta move it forward so it can clear the door. So I'll move it all the way forward, and then you can rotate, swivel it. And then, so you don't feel like you're at the beach, you can pop it up and raise it up like that. Both chairs do that, and then you can just do the same. Let's just um, pull on this slide. Actually, let's pull. I'm gonna, ret I'm gonna retract this. What jack is it? We're sitting with the right. It's, this is my right one. I'm gonna retract that. And I can hear it going up. And as soon as it's up, sometimes it, it, stays, it stays on. It doesn't do the best job of going back to off or whatever. And I'll show you that. Most of the time, it just it stays stuck like that. See, it's stuck, so you just pop it back. Um, I guess I didn't get it all the way up because it's still. Oh, it's just the cards are off. All right, that's it for the inside. Oh, the step, I forgot to show the step. Okay, so when when you when you have this step that says off, this step is gonna come in and out whenever the door opens or closes, and I'll show you right now. And then when you open it, it comes out. Now, if you're, if you're, if you're park camping, 
you don't want that keep coming in and out every time you open the door so you can put the step on that way that step is just going to stay out regardless whether you open or shut the door but the one thing you got to be mindful of is don't leave it out um, you could easily hit that on a curb or whatever and cause some damage so make sure just like you make sure the stabilizing jacks are up and your all the cool all the, the power cord and shoe everything is disconnected like i said good practice to walk around it this would be another thing to be conscious of make sure that step is off so it'll come in when the door's closed all right now i'll just pull in the side out and that that wraps up the inside Oh, my number to call me is 801-836-8674. So if you have any issue, uh, there's that number to call and reach out to me. You can call or text me. Thank you.